Hi guys, Nada here and this is the latest uh, Razer Blade Stealth 13, a super compact 13 inch laptop that somehow still manages to fit a GTX 1650 Ti GPU in there and that kind of makes it pretty much unique as 13 inch laptops don't usually have dedicated graphics cards. Now, I made a video about the previous version of the Blade 13 not too long ago that had a 1650 non-Ti instead and it looks like that Razer will only be selling these new models from now on so I think it's time to do a little update. Even though it looks pretty much the same, it is the exact same design and the exact same size, the upgrades are actually on the inside. So there's the GPU upgrade, of course, from a 1650 to a 1650 Ti. Uh, they bumped the CPU power limit from 15 to 25 watts. And last but not the least, you get a better 120 hertz display with this new model. Now you can still buy a 60 hertz version in some regions, but the price difference is actually very small. And as you will see later in the video, this new faster panel is just better overall. Now, unfortunately, it didn't get any cheaper. Now, for this exact model that comes with the Intel Ice Lake i7, 1650 Ti Max Q, 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gig SSD, and 120 hertz Full HD display, you will have to spend $1,800 or 2,000 euros. So, yeah, let's see what you get for that money. Let's go. This video is brought to you by iFixit and their ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit has all the tools and accessories you need to repair your hardware, whether it's a PC, phone, tablet, console, and so on. It is made of great quality materials, and iFixit backs that claim up with a lifetime warranty. Get yours using the links in the description below. The design of this laptop is just on point. It is made completely out of metal, it is very sleek and minimalistic, and I dare to say uh, there are only a handful of laptops that can compete with the build quality of a blade. So just like the MacBook Pro or the Dell XPS series, it will seem very expensive at first, but it just won't disappoint once you get it in your hands and you start using it. It is very compact too, with a weight of 1.4 kilos and thickness of around 15 millimeters. Now, unfortunately, there is still one little thing that really affects pretty much all Razer laptops, and that is their sensitivity to fingerprints on the outside as well as on the inside of the laptop. And even if you use it with clean hands and just for a tiny bit, it will look very dirty very fast. So I really hope that Razer looks into this in the future and picks different coating that will just offer just a bit more resistance to this normal everyday use. Now the inside is well done as well, it is sturdy and there is almost no flex anywhere and that kind of really helps with that premium feel while typing. The keyboard is single color RGB and it uses the same tactile keys as before and I would say it's a nice keyboard with a good feel to it, uh, it's a bit lighter than your typical gaming laptop but it's easy enough to get used to. Now Razer did get rid of the full-size arrow key, so this time around there is a full-sized shift key instead, which I personally think is an improvement. Uh, the touchpad is nice and large, it has a smooth glass surface and it just works well. I mean, it's really hard to get excited about any touchpad, but it's just fine and it will get the job done. Connections are the same as on the previous blade. On the left side, you get a USB type A port and a USB type C port that also supports charging, plus a combined audio jack. And on the right side, uh, you get another type A port and another type C port uh, that supports both charging and Thunderbolt 3. So if you're really into gaming, for example, you can connect a charger, you can connect a gaming mouse and an external GPU and still have a USB port spare. Now one lesser known improvement is that the processor also had its power limit raised. Now, I noticed in my previous comparison with the Dell XPS 13 that the Intel Ice Lake i7 in the previous blade really fell behind the Dell as it was limited to 15 watts only. Now, Razer kept the same CPU but actually bumped the maximum power from 15 to 25 watts, or at least in theory, because actually while testing the games, I noticed it was often not pulling more than 12 to 15 watts. But as a result of this extra headroom, uh, most CPU benchmarks do look a bit better, but they're actually still behind the results of the same CPU in the XPS 13. So while it improved a bit, it is still not a CPU powerhouse, especially when compared to the Asus G14, for example, whose 
8 core Ryzen 9 4900HS just destroys this quad core i7. I mean, it's still gonna be fine for some photo editing or some light 1080p video editing, but that is pretty much where you need to draw the line. So don't expect a workstation CPU performance from this laptop. So how about the GPU upgrade? Well, the difference between the 1650 Max-Q and the 1650 Ti Max-Q isn't that big either. It's definitely not big enough to throw your 1650 blade out of the window. And it is small enough that if you see a GTX 1650 blade on a good special somewhere, it might not be a bad deal at all. So this new version is a couple of percent faster in most benchmarks. And of course, a lot faster than the iGPU options from both Intel and AMD. And it's also faster than the MX150 or 250 chips that are often found in smaller notebooks. So I think both the GTX 1650 and the 1650 Ti GPUs should be considered great for light gaming, but they're still a bit too light to call them proper gaming GPUs. However, they will be strong enough to let you play most AAA titles at lower settings, which is just not something that other 13-inch laptops can do. On the other hand, if you're really serious about gaming on a compact machine, it is really hard to ignore the results of the 14-inch Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 with an RTX 2060, which is only a tiny bit larger, but much more powerful. One improvement that really is quite big is the new display. This 120Hz panel makes a big difference both in gaming and in normal use. Now the 60Hz blade was good, but this one is just exceptional. It is noticeably faster, so if you play lighter titles like CSGO or League of Legends, you will feel the difference, and it is also considerably better in most test results. Now the peak brightness, for example, is now at stunning 782 nits, making it the brightest laptop panel on my list and one of the few laptops that it is actually okay to take outside and use in the sunlight. Now, color gamut is excellent too, if you want to do some serious creative work and so is the factory calibration. Excellent color accuracy, spot on white point and even though the contrast isn't exceptional, it is still quite good. So I dare to say it is just one of the best laptop panels that you can currently get. As expected, slightly faster parts and a higher refresh display do mean that the battery life on this version is a bit weaker than on the previous model, but I still think it's a good enough score overall. You get around four and a half hours of productivity, just over seven hours of watching Netflix, and around eight to nine hours of light use. So it will be fine if you leave the house and forget your charger at home. There is no reason to panic. Now, more power also means more heat, so of course the fans will have to work a little bit harder to keep up with the improved components. But it still runs pretty cool, uh, most gaming laptops will have CPUs running into the 90s and the blade actually keeps temperatures uh, much more comfortable at reasonable noise levels. It is not as quiet as the GTX 1650 model, but it's still quieter than most others. Now, cleaning or upgrading your blade is still pretty easy, you just remove a couple of screws and you have access to clean the fans, to replace the battery, to upgrade the SSD, to upgrade the Wi-Fi chip if this Wi-Fi 6 ever becomes outdated. Uh, you cannot upgrade the memory as that is soldered on the back of the motherboard and there's no space for a second SSD, but it's really hard to hold that against a 13-inch laptop that already managed to stuff a graphics card in there. Now, Razer did a pretty good job with the speakers too, I would say, especially considering the size of the laptop. Don't get too excited now either, uh, it is still laptop speakers, but they are comfortable enough for, for some uh, YouTube video or occasional Netflix. If you're looking for some reliable and fast external storage, SSDs are the way to go. It doesn't matter if you're just going to use them to copy some files, to work from them, for example, or to keep your games on, they're just such a useful tool to have. Uh, same goes for the webcam, it is pretty decent and it will get the job done. And I think that about covers it. As I said before, the Razer Blade 13 is a great laptop for everyday use. It is really portable, it is really well built, the keyboard and the touchpad are comfortable, and this new 120Hz display is just excellent. It is just a lovely little device to use as a daily driver. But it is also in a bit of a tough position, I would say. So for example, if you don't care about gaming, something like the Dell XPS 13 that's a little bit more elegant, a little bit more compact, and costs about the same would just make more sense. 
And then on the other hand, if you really do care about gaming, something like the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14 is both cheaper and faster. Now the 6050 Ti might make this blade a little bit faster than the previous model, but it really doesn't even come close to the RTX 2060 in the slightly bigger G14. So don't get me wrong, it is still an impressive machine, but with some of the other options on the market currently, it has become less of a small gaming laptop and more of a niche laptop for people that just want the same quality, but just a little bit more gaming performance than a typical 13 inch office laptops have to offer. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please give me a like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more. Bye guys.